In this session, basically, we'll try to learn about the different kinds of journals that we are that are out there, and we'll also try to look at the different kind of bibliographic indicators. Will if you already do not know the meaning of what a bibliographic metric is or a, what a bibliographic indicator is, we'll uh, we'll learn it in a while. We'll also see what do you mean by peer review and what is the meaning of indexing and what is the so-called impact factor. And we'll also look. We'll also have a very careful look at the UCC care list and all the uh, all the misconceptions as well as the clutter surrounding it. Now, uh, here is something a. Uh, a general kind of statement that I would like to put forward for all the participants is that uh, this particular uh, session might be very basic level, might be a very basic level for some of the researchers who already know all this. But uh, overall, I hope so that this would be helpful for, especially for the early career researchers who generally have a lot of confusion in which journals they want to publish and how to choose the different kinds of journals that they are going to publish. Also, for seasoned researchers, this particular session might be helpful in the sense that uh, it will give a very uh, in-depth and clear overview of all the uh, terminologies associated with the all the terminologies and the procedures associated with the different kinds of journals as well as the UGC care list. Now, before I begin the uh, uh, entire uh, scope of discussion on the uh, journals and the journal list and UGC care list. Uh, let me give a very uh, uh, opening kind of remark where I would like to say that uh, in in terms of research quality, there is no substitute for solid work. The most and the the most important criteria for you while publishing a research is that your research should be of solid work. Means, what I mean by here solid is that it should be of uh, good and scientific, and it should be technically accurate and it should be something that would uh, motivate the other researchers or it would help the other researchers in advancing the overall science or overall academics or overall knowledge building in general. Now, we all know that in the current scenario, publishing is very important, primarily uh, maybe uh, from our academic viewpoint or maybe from our professional viewpoint, but we should not forget that the contents that we're publishing, that is also equally important. So, as the uh, recently, what the uh, in a recent article published by the uh, chairman of the UGC, or sorry, the vice chairman of the UGC, has used a term called the pay and publish trash. So, that is something that we should not do. So, uh, there is a very grim uh, kind of site for India in the sense that uh, about 51% uh, of the in a particular analysis, it was found that about fifty-one percent of the bogus science that is out there was published by Indian researchers. And in terms of uh, the number of retractions, India ranked the second in the last year. So these are kind of grim scenarios uh, in, in sense of a uh, in in sense of an Indian context. But what we need to do as serious researchers is that we should avoid this kind of uh, tarnishing image for uh, the nation as such and that is why we should focus on the content quality and we should always prioritize the quality of the content over anything else. Also, this is the reason why we have to understand about the different kinds of journals that is out there because the journals play a very important role in selecting and curating the research that we have uh, that which would be more relevant, which would be more impactful and if we select the journal very carefully, then our own uh, science or our own research will also be benefited in the sense that most of the good journals, they conduct a very good peer review. And this peer review in, in turn will be an effective kind of uh, feedback to the research that we have done. And it will eventually help us improve our research. Now, as I have already mentioned the word peer review, let's look into what exactly is peer review? So peer review is the evaluation of the work by one or more people with similar competencies as the author of the work. Okay. What I mean by here is that, suppose say I am from mechanical engineering and I write a paper and I send it to a particular journal, then my paper would be reviewed in the sense it will be examined by 
a couple of researchers or maybe three researchers from my own field that is the field of mechanical engineering and they will give their expert uh, judgments on that and not just judgments they will give they are supposed to give the constructive criticism or the constructive remarks on that so the whole idea of peer review is that since a person or a so-called expert cannot be expert in all the fields so that is why it is important that the colleagues colleagues in the sense that people working in the same field have the best advantage or the best vantage point to judge the quality of the research and that is the basic uh, principle behind the peer review so uh, it functions as a form of self-regulation by qualified members of the uh, fraternity in the relevant field so the term peer review was first uh, put forward by henry odenberg who is often referred to as the father of modern uh, scientific peer review and he was a uh, german born british philosopher and the there is also something called the scholarly peer review both the things are similar but when we say peer review it can be in general for anything not just scholarly it may be for a news article also it may be for a article that has been uh, sent to some trade journal or some magazine also but when we say scholarly peer review it means uh, the uh, review which is conducted for a uh, academic related or or research related journal so uh, the definition of the scholarly peer review or in general we also refer to it as referring is the process of subjecting an author's scholarly work research or ideas to the scrutiny by others in the same field or other experts in the same field and uh, this is done this is in general done before the uh, paper is published or the, before the work is published why i am saying in general this is done because i will tell you a couple of uh, exceptions to this uh, there are certain journals there there is a lot of development that is going on in the scientific world right now so there are certain journals which publishes the article first and then do the, does the peer review it is kind of uh, it is kind of uh, surprising to know this but there are certain journals who do this and these are very reputed journals who do this and there is a proper logic why they do it in this way so i'll discuss about that particular journal in a while uh, so in the field of peer review there is something called uh, uh, blind review okay so these blind reviews are basically in the uh, in a sense these these are of three types they are single blind review they are double blind review and they are triple blind review so what basically this means is what basically blind here means is that one of the uh, there are three particular main components in the entire publishing world or the entire publishing business there are three main components okay the first component is the author who writes the paper or the author but when i mean or when i say author i mean author or the group of authors okay so there is the author and there is someone called the editor or the editor in chief so this editor or the editorial board or the editor in chief is the editor of the particular journal where the author submits his article and he is the second cog in the wheel and the third cog in the wheel is the reviewer okay reviewer is basically an expert in the same area in which the author has submitted the particular paper so as you understand that there are three different components in is in this entire publishing business or this entire publishing unit there are three different components the first one is the author the second one is the editor and the third one is the reviewer so what basically single blind is in single blind review the author sends the paper to the journal uh, which after initial checks whatever its initial uh, standard may be after that it passes it on to the editorial board or the handling editor or the editor in chief who knows the identity of the author because he has access to the entire system so he knows who the author is then he sends this particular uh, paper to the to a particular expert in the field who is the peer reviewer or who is the reviewer for the particular work the reviewer also has the information regarding who the author is so only the author doesn't have any information regarding who the reviewer is but the author is also aware about who the journal is because who, who the journal editor is because he can see that information from the journal board so in the peer in the single line peer review only the author doesn't have the information regarding who the reviewer is but the reviewer has the information regarding who the author is okay that is single line in double blind review what happens is that 
both the author as well as the reviewer do not have any information about each other but the editor who is there he knows about both of them that who is the reviewer and who is the edit who is the author he knows both details but the author doesn't know who the reviewer is and the reviewer doesn't know who the author is so that is a double blind kind of system means both of them are blind and in the triple blind kind of system what happens is that the editorial staff or the editorial uh, non-technical staff which is not which is not anyhow related to the decision making of the article deletes all the identifying information of the of the author before sending it to the editor in this case what happens is that neither the editor knows who the author is okay but he knows who the reviewer is because he selects the reviewer for the peer review so he knows who the reviewer is but he doesn't know who the author is similarly the author knows who the editor is because he can see that information from the editorial board but he doesn't know who the reviewer is similarly the reviewer doesn't know who the author is but he knows who the reviewer is because that reviewer has uh, invited him for the review so in this particular system what you see is that all the three components in the entire a publishing uh, a cog or the uh, in the wheel or the publishing wheel doesn't know one component uh, among the three of them okay suppose say the author doesn't know who the reviewer is the reviewer doesn't know who the author is and the editor doesn't know who the uh, author is okay so all of them are blind in some way that is why this is called the triple blind review okay so these are the conventional kind of reviews that that goes on and that has been continuing since the event of uh, uh, publication till now of late there is a new phenomenon called the open review okay the open review is a relatively very very new uh, phenomenon and uh, it has developed in the last three to four years so what basically open review is in open review once the particular uh, once the particular uh, paper is published if suppose say the paper is accepted after peer review then the comments made by the uh, reviewer are also published along with the paper okay for the entire readers to read okay so in that in that case the uh, the information regarding who the or the identity of the edit or the identity of the handling editor as well as the uh, reviewer is also mentioned in the manuscript which is published so in the open review what happens is that not only the uh, information regarding the author who is the author which is conventional basically uh, who is the author is published in the article along with the information regarding the uh, article the information regarding the peer review that was conducted the comments that were made on the uh, on the article that is also published along with the name of the reviewer as well as the handling editor so there are some notable examples who conduct this type of reviews for example there is a platform called the f1000 so and there are certain journals called the elife the bmj and the biomed central basically biomed central is a publisher and uh, in in this publisher there are numerous journals there are at least 10 to 15 journals which conduct open review so they publish the review report along with the uh, along with the paper that they are accepting okay in case the paper is rejected in that case the review neither the paper nor the review is published so that is not the case but in case of when the paper is accepted obviously the review is published along with the paper okay. so I, as i was telling you some time back that generally what happens is that a article is submitted to the editorial office or to the journal a review is conducted on the article and based on the review the manuscript is accepted or rejected but there is this particular journal called the f1000 there might be some other journals also like this but i'm i'm not aware about them but i'm aware about the f1000 f1000 is basically a large uh, platform kind of journal and uh, its papers are indexed in the scopus also and what happens in f1000 is that you initially send a paper it is published okay after the initial scrutiny about the layout and all that uh, the regular editorial kind of scrutiny it is published and then the reviews are called for okay 
generally the reviews are called at the, at the same time when the paper is uh, received but since the paper is published within five days of receiving it so that is why we can say that the uh, reviews in general are received at a later date after the paper is published so what happens in f f1000 is a unique case in itself f1000 is a new experimentation in the world of scientific uh, in the world of scientific publishing so let us see how this goes and if this model is successful in the long run we may see a number of other journals also following this kind of a methodology but right now f1000 as far as i know f1000 is the only journal which is following this kind of a methodology where they publish the article first and then they ask for peer review if suppose say after the peer review the article is rejected then still the paper remains there but it is not indexed in scopus but after if suppose say after peer review the paper is accepted then the article is article remains there as well as it is indexed in the scopus database okay so basically what happens with f1000 is that any paper that you send there uh, if it means the if it means the basic ethical standards and the basic basic uh, editorial policies it will be published and depending on whether it passes in the peer review or fails in the peer review it will be indexed in scopus or not indexed in scopus and so on so what you have to also understand about the peer review is that peer review is generally in most of the cases till now what we have seen is that peer review is free of cost it means the reviewers in general are not paid any money for reviewing the articles there might be very few societies like uh, for example i know about the uh, institute of engineers in india which pays uh, its uh, reviewers for uh, for reviewing an article uh, but other than that there are very few um, there are very few journals uh, basically there that might be the society journals which pays its reviewers for reviewing but in general reviewing is free of cost now the basic suggestion that i have after this entire discussion is that always make sure that the journal that you are publishing in is in a peer reviewed journal okay the there are two reasons why i am saying this the first one is that all the accepted criteria for promotion or any any other thing any other benefit or even for recognition is based on the fact that your article your journal article should be peer reviewed the second reason why i am saying is that go for peer review is that generally the reviews are called for some uh, from some researchers who have equal standing or better standing than you in the field of the research that you have done so their point of view or their feedback means a lot and that can help a lot in improving your research so the feedback that you received from the peers in the peer review process that can also significantly help your uh, current research as well as your upcoming research if it is related to the similar area now there are different kinds of journals that is out there so basically we are dealing only with the scientific journals here so i'll be talking only from the perspective of scientific journal there are different kind of other journals also like the trade journals and so on but specifically we are talking from the uh, few point of scientific journals so in academic publishing a scientific journal is a periodical publication intended for the progress of science or the uh, knowledge as such usually by the means of research usually by means of reporting new research so this particular scientific journals can be classified into two different types they can be classified as the limited access journals and they can be classified as the open access journals so the limited access journals are those journals where only uh, the access to the readers are provided provided that they have a subscription to the uh, journal okay so limited access journals are also known as the subscription based journal because here the reader must have some kind of uh, payment mode or some kind of paid uh, subscription with the uh, with the journal to read its articles that is the limited access journals or the subscription based journals so generally if you are reading some uh, papers in your university and you can easily uh, easily read them it might be because your university has already purchased the subscription of those particular journals okay the second type of journals that we see is the open access journals so basically what happens in the open access journals is that the reader or the 
institute of the reader or the organization of the reader doesn't have to pay anything for the for reading the uh, or for uh, reading the scientific article in general what happens is that the author pays the fee for the publishing based on which the article is made freely available to anyone across the world for reading it okay so there are certain cases in which in open access journals the author also need not pay the fee because these are sponsored by some kind of uh, societies there are certain society journals like the journal of operational research by operation research society so these kind of journals are sponsored by the society itself and therefore you need not pay anything for the uh, open access as open access fee and your particular articles if you publish in those kind of journals they will be available freely to everyone without having to buy the subscription there is also something called the predatory journals which has now become a very uh, dreaded feature or very dreaded kind of situation in the uh, scientific world so i'll talk in a lot about uh, the predatory journals and i'll talk in very detail about the predatory journals because this is one of the prime intentions why we do workshops like this because we want to spread the message about or the message against the predatory journals and we want to make all the researchers who are out there alert against the predatory journals so i will discuss in predatory journals in on predatory journals in a lot of detail in the upcoming slides so i am just skipping it here so there are different kinds of articles that we generally publish in uh, scientific uh, uh, journals there may be articles which are the typical uh, research articles that are there so a typical research article has a very well defined kind of flow and the methodology as well as the results are described in quite detail so that anyone who is willing to replicate this study can easily replicate it then there comes something called letter or the communication letter or communication are generally very concise form of the research that you are doing and they are considered very urgent okay so uh, in general the review time for letters is very very low okay because the uh, these are very uh, small and concise articles as well as at the same time they are considered to be of urgent need in the sense that it is it is some uh, topic related to uh, in a particular field where a lot of competition is there and where suppose say a lot of a uh, lot of rival uh, researchers are uh, publishing and working on it so it becomes very important for a particular researcher to publish his idea as soon as possible to get the credit for the innovation or to get the credit for the idea then there comes something called a letter to the editor letter to the editor are typical letters which are written by uh, the readers or by the uh, researchers to the editor regarding different kinds of articles that they have already published in their journal then there comes something called the research notes research notes are somewhat similar to the letters but they are uh, they are also of the similar structure like the letters okay the methodology section is generally not in depth in the uh, research notes because these are also considered to be something that the researchers are actively doing and in the research note the prime difference between the research notes and the letters is that letters are generally considered urgent whereas the research note are generally not considered that urgent then we have something called the supplementary articles the supplementary article can be thought of a additional article or the article that is made up of additional information that was published in a research article sometimes what happens is that because of the space limitations or because of the uh, because of different kinds of other aesthetic limitations all the information related to a particular article may not be publishable in the main article itself in such cases to make the readers aware about the different kinds of procedures that is out there and the different kinds of data that is associated with the articles supplementary article is published there is also something called the review articles review articles are something which makes a detailed analysis of the uh, ongoing of different kinds of articles that are obliquely published review articles are generally of prime importance because they provide the uh, first time researchers or they provide researchers uh, who want to work in a particular field with a uh, level kind of uh, playground where they can read uh, about a lot of articles by reading 
where, where they can learn about a lot of articles by reading a single article. There's also something called the data papers. Data papers again is a new trend or a new phenomenon. There are certain journals that have that are there. Uh, for example, the data in brief or the data journal and all that, where primarily only the research data is published. And often these uh, papers contain a small description of how the data was collected and how the data should be interpreted. But in general, this kind of data papers do not have any conclusion or any results section. They just have the data that they have collected or that they have analyzed. Maybe sometimes it may be raw data or sometimes it may be analyzed data. But in general, the conclusion abstract and all these things are not there. But some description regarding the uses of the data as well as how to read the data is there. There's also something called the video papers that has been recently, very, very recently started from the last two to three years back. So video papers is, it just initially started with something called the video uh, abstract where uh, certain journals were calling for uh, abstract, which was given in form of video. Now, the, now a little advancement to that has happened and there is something called the video papers where as the name suggests, these are like small video clips which uh, tells about the entire research that is conducted by certain researchers.